Okay, so we're here for another Q&A. It's the last day of the festival. And um, we've just seen the short film The Yurt, which is a great feature, a uh, great film we've just seen here. And I'm joined with one of the film, one part of the team. Can you introduce yourself, please, and your role? Um, hi, I'm Jose, Jose Armigal. Um, I'm the DOP of The Yurt. Fantastic, thank you so much for joining us. Um, first question, when does a DOP first become involved uh, in this project in particular? Um, it's quite early on actually. Um, I met Zach um, 2017 on a feature. We were working together in Atlanta, and um, from then on, he gave me a short. He showed me the material that he already shot before, um, and we just kind of built a relationship uh, based around his project. Um, I kind of was involved with writing a little bit, planning for over a year um, until we had sufficient funds to attempt to shoot the first part of the film. Um, and uh, yeah, it was great. I was able to do visit all the locations, get to know the people. Um, you might not know this, but um, a lot of the characters just play themselves and are part of that community itself. So for me, that was quite attractive to have uh, that mixture of documentary fiction, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, but yeah. So you get the script. Do you sit down with the writer-director? Do you go through the shots, what you've got in mind, or do you wait until you've seen the locations? Uh, no, you, you generally you try and get the vision of what the director and the writer are kind of working uh, with. Um, the kind of the look and the, the feel of how you want the film to look, that's very down to just your preparations and the equipment you'll be using. but. Um, this one was attractive to me because it was, you know, as you've seen, the year itself has a very geographical, interesting, you know, it's like a set, basically, it's the real world. Um, we don't have money to build state, sorry, to build sets, so that was enough for me to be like, oh, this has a lot of potential. Um, working with both Zach and Andrew, um, they it was kind of like a fluid script. It kept changing all the way through once we started filming till the very end and whilst we were in the editing room. So that's always been evolving. Um, visually, I was trying to tell a story, you know, visually, you know, and that enhances the points of the character, the psychology. Um, so that's kind of where I was always, I would sort of say, the, the third wheel in the relationship to, to guide the project. Um, so you touched on the locations and things like that. Um, obviously you've got the yurt uh, itself, the inside of the yurt, uh, you've got the, the woods, mm -hmm. stroke forest, um, and also you've got some really lovely things there at the end, which uh, are around the lake. What are some of the challenges in using so many different kind of locations for you as a, as a DOP? Uh, well, the yurt was the hardest, even though it seems the easiest. It was about 50... I would say it was about 50 miles from any town in North Carolina. So we had to get a huge jenny, we had to get all the equipment to be able to put any lights in there because it was off the grid, no power, no nothing. Um, so the hardest part was, you know, every day we would essentially travel uh, to rig everything and set all the lights and everything so we could just start rolling by sort of 11-ish. Um, just because it's in, nobody lives there, you know, it's just like a family home. So just the manning time and expectations, you know, you think that, you know, this is the look I want, this is what I want to achieve, um, but then, you know, it requires a lot of manpower and in this type of productions, you know, we didn't. Um, the rest of the locations were, were easy to shoot because of just being able to, you know, find your time window frames, find your, your nice lighting, um, keep it very simple, you know. We shot it all with, with one camera, so um, you had to really find, uh, you know, you had to be really quick when you, you mm. so a lot of it was just preparing for that. Yeah, I was gonna say, it must take a lot of planning to get those shots at the right times of day to make it look how you obviously wanna yeah. portray the story. Um, talk about equipment then in cameras. What do you use and you know, what's your choices behind that equipment that you use in particular? Um, I mean, I'm a, I'm a believer that a camera is just a tool. Um, 
you know, if you have a nice, uh, we shot we shot this with Alexa and Blackmagic cameras um, because we kind of shot the film in loads of different stages. We never had the sufficient funding to sustain a proper um, sort of camera package. But um, uh, I think uh, we were lucky because I mean, both Zach and I work uh, as film technicians, so. We had access to you know, <coughs> a friend as a steady cam operator. We had uh, access to you know some of our grip and electric guys that were able to provide us with you know a lot of equipment that you mm -hmm. know uh, just pulling the flavor the flavors you know <laughs> to try and make it happen. Um, yeah. That would turn so as a, a DOP, you've seen it on the big screen. Is that a proud moment for you, or are you like do you still see little things that you'd like to change? I How think you will here? always see that. Yeah. Um, the most, um, the best feeling to sort of describe what I've just had was this, is it was a new experience, you know. Um, uh, it didn't feel like I've seen this movie before, uh, yeah. you know. I was also, I did the grading for this film as well, so I was, I saw every pixel of it uh, for, you know, during the whole lockdown and stuff. Um, but it was mainly more um, the, the atmosphere, the, 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 the screen and, just being able to see it on a on a bigger picture and seeing you know the clarity of your image, you know it's it's very different to seeing it on a 12-inch MacBook, you know. <laughs> it looks it looks fantastic as well, I should say. Um, so okay, so as a DOP, um, where do you get your inspiration for either in general or for this film in particular? If you want to talk about that, are there any other people that you admire? Maybe artists, photographers, you know. What, what drives you, what you know, influences you? Um, visually, I would like to, I mean, I, my, my go-to for inspiration is street photography. Okay. Um, black and white, specifically, but um, I like contrast. Um, I, like, uh, uh, I like images that just kind of say more than you know, what they kind of is in general. Um, this movie was kind of very. We when we were discussing, you know, how is it going to look like? What's it feel? Um, you know, we were kind of finding the 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 look for it. So I looked a lot into um, like uh, Danny Boyle's The Beach because it has a little bit of similar sort of um, narrative. Um, also, a lot of the American sort of indie films, uh, well, in the high indie films like Lost in Translation, stuff like that, we sat down together, we would watch it, kind of try and find what's the right flow for the camera, the, mm. the type of angles and shots. Um, the yurt kind of um, looks the way it looks just because of the, the, the space that we had, the physical space. It's not like we were in a stage that we could just mm. take a wall out or whatever. It's like you're there, so. Yeah. You just embrace the opportunities and, and, and what the locations present, so you can use them to enhance your storytelling. Um, this is a big question, maybe. What do you like best about your job, being a director of photography? Um, yeah, it's a tough question. Um, Obviously, I like working, you know, with cameras and and, and looking cool. But uh, <laughs> no, um, it's it's working. It's essentially being the the right hand of the director, and I, I like being involved in technical decisions and problem solvings. You know, you you prepare yourself for the day. You know, you physically and mentally, and and when you're there, you have to make decisions on the spot that you know might affect the day or the outcome of of whether you finish your day or not. Um, the most important thing is having that energy, you know, and I, I, I go back to like, you know, if I was, you know, in a, in a music band, you know, it's the guitarist that kind of like would give you those sort of melodies and guide you that sort of that, that bit of um, character. And I think that's kind of like the DP, you know, like if you have a good DP, uh, you know, your image will look pretty and stuff, but like the, the job's not completed unless the story's told, you know, and it's about accentuating, giving you um, characteristics, but at the same time, it's the director's story, you know. Yeah. It's having that, that distinction, I think, is what's important. Okay. Was there any burning questions from the audience at this moment? I, pers I found the visuals truly stunning. Um, how much control did you get over the overall look? Was, was Zachary quite hands-on in how he wanted it to look, or did he give you a lot of control? Um, I was... Uh, 
Yeah, I was pretty much I had full creative control, even though we did have our you know friction moments. Um, it's the first time uh, I, I there were some intimate scenes that were kind of improvised, and I felt that I wasn't gonna get the shots because you know it was essentially um, it was improvised, so it's something that he kind of needed to cut out so, um, and make the decisions on what he was gonna frame. So I actually let him frame some stuff, you know, when we were doing the breathwork scene. Um, so I just focused completely just, you know, had, so it was that type of collaboration that we had uh, that was good because I think it allowed us to just focus, you know, he focused on actors and, and how the story is progressing and I just focused with the technicians and, you know, like, uh, and trying to find that balance of being able to meet his expectations but also being able to fulfill my, um, you know, my, my vision. And the film was absolutely gorgeous, especially on the big screen. But there's one interesting question that I always find gives an insight into the person. If there was any celebrity that you could shoot or film with or take photos of, like, have you got anyone in mind that you, you would just love to work with? Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. That was very quick. Yeah. <laughs> You're not prepared. No thought left. <laughs> uh, uh, I think it's just visually interesting as a person, you know, like, I think, uh, I mean, we had Denise here, she's not an actor, uh, and just when you put a light and when you see, uh, when, you, uh, when you have a normal person uh, uh, in a normal lighting environment, they look like themselves, but when you light them and you put an eye light and you, know, you, have, you put the lens and all that chemistry works, um, you will start to, to be visually in, intriguing a person. And I think Joaquin is, is maybe one of those where like, I mean, it's, it's all, the roles he plays are always very, you know, bonkers, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. Good pick. Any other questions? Uh, how did you find this location, or was it written around this location? Um, this film was written around uh, the location. Um, Zach went to the North School of, uh, North, Car North Carolina School of Arts, and that's where he met uh, John and some of the other guys involved with the project. And they, um, the movie essentially is, is just um, his experiences at, 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 at you know connecting with this community. That's a, you know it's it's a real community, um, and he kind of just wanted to you know make a make a narrative out of it. So everything that we kind of wrote on the day and all that stuff had restrictions creatively to accommodate for the location. Let's play. Desert Island movies. So you're on a desert island. Um, you're, you're allowed three films to watch for the rest of your life. Uh, I know to give you three because people really struggle with five. Yeah. Let's go for three. Which three would you pick? Uh, damn. Okay. Um, Transpotting. Um, then I'm going to take um, The Life of Brian. <laughs> uh, um, Got to have a comedy in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we're very engineer. Three very interesting bits. Very different. Like it. Um, okay, so final question. Um, what's your next project? What are you currently working on that's going to come out soon? Um, at the moment, I haven't got anything that I'm in, in the lines. Uh, with COVID, um, I kind of just went to work as a technician, which is what I do mm -hmm. normally. Mm -hmm. um, this is, uh, yeah, I'm going to. Mm -hmm fetch reaching out to people, collaborators. Um, I like to do, you know, projects like this. Yeah. You know, I like to keep making projects like this. Um, most of the time it's trying to find the right people that, you know, will go at it uh, for the full marathon, you know. Yeah. Absolutely, I think if you show this film to the people, I think you shouldn't have any problems finding collaborators. Yeah. It's a beautiful film, and uh, congratulations on it, and thank you so much for joining us, Jose. Thank you. We have a round of applause again, please. Thank you.